Russia's youngest conscripts find themselves in the middle of a major war. The long-held sacred practice of avoiding the involvement of young Russian army conscripts in combat is being destroyed in the Kursk region. As the New York Times writes, it has become standard practice in Russia not to send conscripts to the front lines. This is provided for by law and accepted by all parents who hope to protect their sons from the carnage of war. But Ukraine's lightening fast invasion of the Kursk region has crossed out this agreement. Moscow was taken by surprise. Suddenly, war came to the conscripts. Hundreds of them were captured. Dozens are missing and potentially dead. Moscow's decision to send young, untrained soldiers to the battlefields of Afghanistan and Chechnya helped bolster the domestic opposition that forced the Kremlin to end those conflicts. So during the chaotic first days of Russia's February 2022 invasion of Ukraine, when several hundred newly drafted soldiers were found in units that had crossed the border, Putin ordered military commanders to send them home. Only professional military personnel will carry out assigned tasks, Putin said at the time. However, when Ukraine broke through to the Kursk region, Putin did not recall the conscripts. Some newly minted soldiers from remote regions told their families that they were being sent to Kursk as reinforcements. The unexpected danger to the conscripts has sparked a bitter online battle between war supporters who accuse fathers of being soft on their sons and parents upset that a long-standing tradition has been broken. Russians have been outraged, criticizing the lack of proper training, poor weapons and the small number of elite descendants serving. Before sending conscripts into combat conditions, teach them how to handle weapons and provide them with modern means of warfare. There is no point in defending the borders of the motherland with bare hands, wrote Russian citizen Elena. Russia would need between 30,000 and 40,000 Russians to drive the Ukrainians out of Kursk, military analysts say. The fact that they have been slow to deploy a force of that size is a sign that they lack the necessary reserves. Russia is facing a labor shortage, said Pavel Luzin, a Russian military analyst questioning Putin's claim that the country has deployed nearly 700,000 troops to eastern Ukraine. These troops do not exist, so Russia needs to use conscripts. The use of conscripts in wars is taboo for the regime due to fears that it could fuel a national anti-war movement. According to reports in the independent Russian media at the time, untrained conscripts were thrown into bloody urban battles for which they were completely unprepared. Intense pressure from parent groups not only forced an end to the war, but also pushed the Kremlin to rewrite the rules to keep conscripts out of combat. The conscription issue is one of those hot-button issues for Putin personally because of Chechnya, said Dara Masikot, an expert on Russian defense and security issues at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. The Russian leader has been extremely consistent in avoiding the use of conscripts, she said, adding that deploying poorly trained conscripts adds significant political risk with limited military benefit. After the Kursk invasion, more than 12,000 people signed a petition against the use of conscripts, but there were no reports of street protests. Ukraine is fighting for Donbass because of the region's vast natural resources, which Kiev and its foreign backers want to exploit, former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev said. The Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics, which officially joined Russia together with Kherson and Zaporozhye regions in the fall of 2022, are completely alien to Ukraine in terms of culture, Medvedev wrote on Telegram. The reason why the Kiev authorities are trying to get them back so desperately, he explained, is trivial. Money is needed. The criminal clique of Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky, which has stolen so heavily, has led the country's economy to disaster, while Kiev's backers in the US and EU have also spent a lot on aiding Ukraine during conflict, which irritates their populations. Medvedev, who serves as deputy chair of the Russian Security Council, also pointed out. The West needs a payback from Ukraine, he said, adding that it has nothing to do with Zelensky personally. This kid will be gone soon, but the debt will remain, and it must be paid off with interest, the former president noted. Medvedev reminded readers that according to open source data, the natural resources located in Donbass are estimated to be worth $7.3 trillion. The area is rich in coal, metals, rare earth elements, and other valuable materials, including lithium.
To get access to the coveted minerals, the Western parasites shamelessly demand that their wards in Kiev wage war to the last Ukrainian, he wrote. Russia says that Western politicians are directly voicing their plans, the official said, referring to a statement made by South Carolina's Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. In June, the Republican lawmaker called Ukraine a gold mine due to its vast reserve of critical minerals. Graham argued that Washington should keep helping Kyiv in the conflict with Moscow to make sure that assets could be used by Ukraine and the West not given to Putin and China. With the Russian military making steady gains in Donbass since the start of the year and now approaching the strategic town of Pokrovsk, the fact remains that the economic basis of Ukrainian statehood has been undermined, Medvedev wrote. The resource base that had been illegally obtained by Kiev after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 has returned to its native country, which is Russia, he said. As for Ukraine, the Western aid it gets will soon dry up and all that awaits the country is rapid decomposition and imminent disintegration. The former president concluded,